to commit to raising the minimum wage to $9.50 an hour by the year 2012. <laughs> Second, there are more women in poverty than men in poverty. And I have made this a central cause in my life and a central cause in my campaign. More women have difficulty getting the health care that they need than men do. And I was the first person to come out with a comprehensive, truly universal health care plan. So do you believe you're a better advocate for women than Senator Clinton? Those are issues. Listen, Senator Clinton has a long history of speaking out on behalf of women. She deserves to be commended for that. But I, have, but I believe that on the issues that directly affect women's lives, I have the strongest, boldest ideas and can bring about the change that needs to be brought. Senator Clinton, is he a better advocate for women? Well, Anderson, I, I have a great deal of admiration for Elizabeth Edwards, and I appreciate greatly uh, John's comments. You know, I have spent my entire life advocating for women. I went to Beijing in 1995 and said that women's rights are human rights, and I've done everything I can to make that principle come true. And specifically on issues, I got to vote to raise the minimum wage. I put in legislation which said that Congress should not get a salary increase until they did raise the minimum wage, and I'm putting that back in because I agree that by the time we got it raised after 10 years, it was already out of date. And as to women in poverty and women with health care needs, I have been on the forefront of both advocating and creating change in my public service, in my time wow. in Arkansas, the White House, and now in the Senate. But I think it is terrific. We're up here arguing about who's going to be better for women, because isn't that a nice change for everybody to hear? Our next question is on a topic that got a lot of response from YouTube viewers. Let's watch. Hi, my name's Mary. My name is Jen. And we're from Brooklyn, New York. If you were elected president of the United States, would you allow us to be married to each other? <laughs> Congressman Kucinich. Barry and Jen, the answer to your question is yes. And let me tell you why. Because, because if our Constitution really means what it says, that all are created equal, if it really means what it says, that there should be equality of opportunity before the law, then our brothers and sisters who happen to be gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgendered should have the same rights accorded to them as anyone else, and that includes the ability to have a civil marriage ceremony. Yes, I support you, and welcome to a better and a new America under a President and Senate administration. Senator Dodd, you supported the Defense of Marriage Act. What's your position? I've made the case, uh, uh, Anderson, that I've, uh, my wife and I have two young daughters, uh, age five and two. I simply ask the audience to ask themselves the question that Jackie and I have asked. How would I want my two daughters treated if they grew up and had a different sexual orientation than their parents? Good jobs, equal opportunity to be able to retire, to visit each other, to be with each other, as other people do. So I feel very strongly, if you ask yourself the question, how would you like your children treated if they had a different sexual orientation than their parents, the answer is yes. They ought to have that ability in civil unions. I don't go so far as to call for marriage. I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. But my state of Connecticut, the state of New Hampshire, have endorsed civil Fine. unions. I strongly support that, but I don't go so far as marriage. Governor Richardson? Well, I would say to the two young women, I would level with you. I would do what is achievable. What I think is achievable is full civil unions with full marriage rights. I would also press for you a hate crimes act in the Congress. I would eliminate don't ask, don't tell in the military. If we're going to have in our military men and women that die for this country, we shouldn't give them a lecture on their sexual orientation. I would push for domestic partnership laws, non-discrimination in insurance and housing. I would also okay. send a very strong message that in my administration I will not tolerate any discrimination on the basis of race, Time. gender, or sexual orientation. This next question is for Senator Edwards. I'm Reverend Reggie Longcrime, I'm the pastor of Exodus Mission and Outreach Church in Hickory, North Carolina. Senator Edwards said his opposition to gay marriage is influenced by his Southern Baptist background. Most Americans agree it was wrong and unconstitutional to use religion to justify slavery, segregation, and denying women the right to vote. So 
why is it still acceptable to use religion to deny gay Americans their full and equal rights? I think Reverend Longcryer asks a very important question, which is whether fundamentally, whether it's right for any of our faith beliefs to be imposed on the American people when we're President of the United States. I do not believe that's right. I feel enormous personal conflict about this issue. I want to end discrimination. I want to do some of the things that I just heard Bill Richardson talking about, standing up for equal rights, substantive rights, civil unions, the things that Chris Dodd just talked about. I think that's something everybody on this stage will commit themselves to as President of the United States. But I personally have been on a journey on this issue. I feel enormous conflict about it. As I think a lot of people know, Elizabeth spoke at, my wife Elizabeth spoke out a few weeks ago, and she actually supports uh, gay marriage. Uh, I do not. Uh, but this is a very, very difficult issue for me, and I, and I recognize and have enormous respect for people who have a different view of it. should also point out that uh, the Reverend is actually in the audience tonight. Where is he? Right over here. Reverend, do you feel he answered your question?